And we're live. Uh, Giacomo, thank you very much for being with us for today's interview on NRI 2020, which we're launching in October. So this is a quick interview and you've seen the questions before. Let's jump right into it uh, with question number one. Uh, but first, I'm sorry, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Yes, uh, my name is Giacomo Damioli and uh, I work at uh, the European Commission. I work uh, on in the competence centers of composite indicators. That is a uh, competence centers within the joint research center, a department of uh, the commission that has the uh, task of uh, bridging the gap between uh, science and policy making. And uh, my expertise relies on the methodological aspect of, of uh, building composite indicators and scoreboard. Okay, very good, thank you for that. Um, so yes, if we jump into the first question, the need for digital transformation, um, in your opinion, how, do, how, how did companies or countries digital transformation strategy changed due to COVID? And if in any ways this pandemic might have kickstarted one's um, digital transformation? Uh, thank you for uh, the question. Uh, yes, I think uh, that uh, COVID, uh, the pandemics have brought uh, a challenge, uh, an additional challenge in uh, the digital agenda of uh, many organizations and uh, societies at large. It uh, provides uh, great opportunities to to find the quick uh, solutions to an emerging issues. So the change of uh, the digital strategy is uh, even more urgent uh, nowadays in these days where uh, business organizations, uh, civil society and government are trying to reorganize and uh, reshape their future objectives and goals after the big shock they had. the digital technologies uh, has already been uh, shown to be potentially very helpful in uh, managing such uh, a challenging uh, emergence, emergence. You can uh, see that in the huge amount of uh, people uh, limited in uh, mobility so that uh, telework is uh, became a common praxis for uh, for uh, most of many people in the world that uh, created challenges in, ensure, in uh, ensuring, ensuring uh, both uh, access to platforms or uh, to stability of uh, uh, digital uh, devices within organizations and also, the huge uh, increase in uh, virtual meetings, uh, tools that uh, many people, many workers weren't used to, that uh, created a lot of uh, investments, uh, in, especially in uh, co big corporations. And these investments uh, uh, will probably create some path dependence, meaning that uh, Given the great uh, resources involved in that, uh, depending on the outcome, depending on the observed level of productivity, could be maintained in the future. So they would be, they would probably create a huge shift in uh, patterns that uh, we have seen in terms of uh, properties, uh, uh, the housing sector, the residence behavior of people in the, in, the, in the years to come. If that investment perhaps prove uh, successful, I believe that uh, this, uh, this investment will create uh, some uh, long lasting effects and uh, the, all the full strategies of organization need to and quickly adjust and react accordingly. 
Oh, excellent. Thank you. I think the key words are the long lasting effect and the, the adjustment that's necessary in this shift. Very good. Thank you. Um, is there anything you do differently um, in such a crisis or for a second wave? If you had known back in February this world was going to see such a crisis, is there something you would have done differently? Just a bonus sub question. If I would have known that uh, on uh, February, I would have probably organized uh, my working environment differently at home. <laughs> I would have created a better, uh, uh, I would have uh, organized to have a physical space to work, uh, let's say, to create a divide between a family and, uh, and work that uh, once uh, upon a time was created by going physically to the office and now it's uh, very mixed, as you can see in the background of my, let's say, new office. <laughs> and uh, and yes, uh, I would have mainly, uh, that's one of the things I was uh, referring to when speaking about uh, housing behavior and uh, property settings and residence locations. I mean, I wouldn't see the need now of staying uh, in, close to the job uh, and uh, I would uh, give more weight uh, to say residential space. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, um, what about question number two? If we think of this digital transformation and this shift that you've mentioned before, what about inclusion, diversity, and the digital divide? Can you think of any way that um, digital transformation can be leveraged to build more inclusive and more diverse, more equitable economies and workplaces? I think uh, in the workplace, uh, it, uh, it, it creates a uh, the opportunity to probably reduce the cost, uh, physical space is uh, probably less need, will be less needed than in the past. And uh, the importance of uh, creating a, a stable infra digital infrastructure will be more and more important. Also, the change in uh, commerce partners uh, have been huge. We have seen the increase of uh, e-commerce. We have seen the, that uh, now the importance of being digital is vital for many companies and business. And uh, the ability to transform and uh, upgrade to a to a digital to the digital community for uh, not only for selling but for promoting uh, for uh, um, marketing purposes for networking will be more and more uh, it was already a, a need uh, or a, an element of success but now becomes uh, an element of survival for many, for many, many companies. Of course, uh, there are also bad, uh, bad side, if you want, uh, the lack of, uh, of the physical face-to-face uh, -face interaction and the networking uh, opportunities with colleagues, uh, with partners uh, that uh, is very difficult to replace it uh, with uh, with the more formal online uh, interaction that uh, need to be planned uh, ex ante in, in uh, typically very very full agendas and it's not uh, the kind of uh, 
face-to-face -face daily interaction you were having in the breaks, uh, in, in the coffee breaks, <laughs> or uh, with, so this kind of uh, element of uh, working together, of creating uh, a team spirit, uh, would be a challenge for uh, to to place it digitally. So I think. Uh, it's, uh, it requires a bit of time also for uh, people to adapt and to adjust uh, in terms of uh, their, art, their habits, their uh, practices, and would be possible and would be, and is it possible? Is possible already now? Mm -hmm. But these are things that in the short term create, uh, can create uh, isolations and some kind of psychological problems that the organization need to take care and uh, consider. Absolutely. What about unemployment as a sub question? Looking at inclusion and the bigger picture, how do you see people being unemployed uh, possibly being um, included again through this or thanks to this digital transformation? This uh, is uh, very Good question and timely, given that uh, most advanced economies now have a lot of redundant people uh, still uh, more or less uh, attached to their jobs, but with uh, no, not the strong chance of uh, finding it back when all this will, will end. So there will be a lot of disruption and a lot of uh, unemployment in the years to come. And uh, this transformation of uh, great opportunity to involve them uh, in terms of, uh, for instance, uh, online training and materials and, uh, and, the, and the free circulation of information or uh, on uh, vacancies everywhere in the world. The, the key challenge would be if, uh, in the, uh, if the economy doesn't grow enough to sustain the absorption of uh, this unemployment. So one, one unemployment becomes persistence, persistent and people don't find jobs uh, over uh, months or years and become, say, persis persistently out of the labor market. The, the risk of uh, isolation and uh, loss of self-esteem with the psychological uh, uh, problems increase dramatically. So, it's up uh, a lot of uh, it's uh, up to government to create the right uh, social instruments, social services that could uh, become provided the availability of access to digital technologies that should uh, more and more available for everybody uh, to to try to include them through not only if employment or uh, say paid uh, employment or uh, say stand, uh, what we were used to call uh, stand, standard employment is less available, more scarce than before, to try to include them uh, with uh, tools that could integrate, in, integrate them in uh, volunteering in uh, some kind of social activity that would be extremely useful for uh, avoiding losing, uh, increasing the numbers of people from uh, the, from having a common goal, common objective, mm -hmm. and, the, and, and then hope for their future. Absolutely, so I hear to sustain the economic growth and make sure we can reincorporate all those unemployed um, redundant um, staff. I know you're an economist, so can you tell us more about how 
if we come to figures, how can we actually measure digital transformation? Do you have any tip on that? Digital, uh, digital transformation and uh, the labor market are, uh, oh, say the, the labor market uh, phase of digital transformation is very interesting, in my opinion, it would be not easy to measure it, the standard statistics uh, have a little uh, digital uh, focus, in my opinion. New, 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 new technologies uh, are uh, starting to be exploited uh, at the in good quality, for instance, job vacancies, that is something that is not uh, uh, typically available. What we observe uh, typically is the match between vacancies and the job seekers. So we see the equilibrium, but the job vacancies uh, include also unfilled vacancies. So they provide a measure source of uh, skills shortages when they remain unfilled when uh, there is the demand of labor that uh, not, is not easy to find. That kind of data that could be available and leveraged through uh, platforms like, for instance, LinkedIn, are increasingly helpful to measure uh, the, um, the, uh, the labor demand of a country and uh, they would also provide opportunity through, through text mining, to even natural language processing to extract the right information with a focus on digital positions. So, and this is very timely because we know, we are, we are, it's known that the, the one of the sphere of the economy where there is an increasing demand of labor of skilled people is just in digital is just about the people with the digital skills so we would observe uh, we would track uh, the strength uh, of a country of an economy in this specific sector, uh, sector through for instance uh, statistics on uh, job vacancies also of course uh, the stand most standard uh, jobs uh, statistics uh, that they use uh, uh, industry classifications or professional uh, occupational classification can uh, use the, be used to track uh, the phenomenon Still, uh, my fear there is that the, the international classification are not uh, yet uh, flexible enough to have really a focus on digital, say, on, on uh, jobs with a, a truly digital content. There are still classification that mix different categories together. Very good. I'm taking notes as you speak. Um, so it all comes back to digital readiness. Yeah, absolutely. Very handy for our index. Um, great. So that was a sub question. Moving to question number three on talent. We've touched on unemployment. Would you have anything to tell me about reskilling, upskilling, lifelong learning? I believe you've been a consultant too in the past and also a teaching assistant. So how do you see talent and the whole reskilling um, scheme um, going forward in this post-crisis world? That's probably one of the most, uh, most uh, urgent uh, issues that uh, governments in the world uh, need to face. And, uh, the best, uh, the better companies are all are already facing uh, in terms of internal training. Providing the human, the needed the human capital is a challenge uh, that is very timely and important because uh, the digital transformation uh, is uh, changing uh, the type of skills that. Uh, are important for the, 
for the economy, for, for employers. So even if um, a lot of people will become unemployed, there is uh, the opportunity to for them to move to change uh, find to change their occupation, finding a new job with the, that requires different skills. So the ability for the labor force to to acquire uh, right skills demanded for uh, from a evolving uh, market, uh, changing at the fast pace are essentials. This is a transformation can help uh, in uh, providing courses with uh, 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 both in terms of trainings to, if you want, uh, unemployed people or uh, people uh, that uh, are working uh, but uh, want to upgrade the skills, but in terms of standard education courses, we had examples now with the closure of schools, how much was helpful, how much digital technology was helpful in terms of trying to not interrupt the education of our kids, of our children, and uh, bridging uh, the gap that uh, the COVID brought in terms of day-to-day uh, -day schooling with physical proximity between teachers and students. I think uh, that was, uh, and uh, we remain uh, up to when at least uh, the the Pandemia won't uh, abandon us. We remain a, a very, very important uh, tool for uh, ensuring uh, the continuation of, of the education system as a, as a whole. I, we, I see that in the long term, ideally, digital tools will just be complementing education face to face. I think that is very important also uh, that there are uh, important dimensions that still relate to the physical proximity, the, create, the creation of uh, uh, social bonds, uh, social ties with the peers, with the, with the children, a crucial element of the education process uh, and the, the more in general of the development of uh, young uh, into adults. And so I, I see that, uh, I see digital tools as complementing in the longest term, but uh, the, really the core of uh, the educa education and the training system in these difficult days. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, moving on to um, question number four on being competitive. Can you tell us anything about how companies, organizations, and um, governments can be tech ready and, and full of innovation? Is there anything <clears throat> maybe re relevant to the SDGs that you can share? <laughs> the, the, well, the global competition in the global market the competition is uh, huge especially for uh, people and businesses uh, uh, this uh, basically make uh, the difference between uh, surviving or dying being successful or failing so Tapping, tapping, keeping uh, on track with digital transformation, adopt the digital solution in the production system is a, a necessity for uh, companies, as I was saying before, a necessity for uh, people, as I was saying before. And uh, it is uh, even more 
a necessity for governments if they want to achieve uh, growth, economic growth and well-being of their citizens. I think uh, it is a tremendous challenge for the government to, to get uh, to, to keep uh, to be able to critically uh, use digital, digital technologies because uh, these technologies are uh, so new and so technical that they require an understanding that is uh, not uh, easy to maintain in uh, at the gover uh, in government in general but this is uh, the challenge that uh, they need to f the gap that they need to fill and uh, they are they are in the position of uh, doing that. Of course, the innovations are so quick and uh, evolve in real time. So keeping track of everything uh, imply the, the development of a strategy, the development of uh, a political commitment, a lot of resources, the ability to to put the right uh, people in the right position to be able to make uh, decisions and to be able not only to understand the technology, to be able to communicate them to people that uh, maybe don't have the background to follow on a technical sphere, uh, on a technical from a technical point of view. So it's a balance of technological communications and the strategical skills that need to be combined and assembled within an overall strategy and an overall commitment that in order to be able to succeed in such a task. That, that, that is, I think, a, a real challenge in a, many governments and many institutions in general. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So I hear um, there's the innovation, then there's the technology, and then there's the transfer of so like the, the knowledge management and making sure it's shared. And so you've mentioned three top priorities for the global map and to be competitive. Uh, digital transformation is a necessity for people, organization and government if they want to achieve um, everything they wish to achieve. Excellent. Uh, well, we've covered a lot. I think that's going to be it for today.